Okay, I almost forgot to show you something. Uh, when you get out of uh, Blight Town, uh, sweet fresh air, there are there is a bit of a change up the filing shrine, and it's not uh, the firekeeper I uh, showed you before. So, therefore, before I can actually sign off completely, I need to show you this. Let's see, nope, there we go. Now, as you can see here, I have gathered 23 large titanite shards and 61 green titanite shards. Because those leeches apparently drop 5 bloody green titanite shards. So, yes. Now, yeah, the firekeeper's dead, and uh, I'll show you a bit more about that later. Did you ring the second bell? That is incredible, I must say. But now... We have a new problem. It's noisy. It snores. And its breath is lethal. This is no laughing matter, I tell you. What is he talking about? Damn. That stench. And I was really beginning to like it here. Oh, maybe it's time I do something about it. Oh, maybe it... Yes. What is he talking about? Bad breath? Snoring? Wait, there was snoring before, wasn't there? Oh, right, that's... Uh, that was... it's dead. Yeah. Well... The answer is... this thing. And you're asking, what the f is that? That is King Seeker Frampt. Now, here's the thing you need to know. If you want to do an evil playthrough, you want to align yourself with the Dark Wraiths, do not talk to Kingseeker Frant at this point. But I am not doing an evil playthrough. Besides, this guy is too funny to not talk to. And he's goddamn creepy. Ah, hello. Was it you who rang the Bell of Awakening? I am the Primordial Serpent. King Seeker Frapt, close friend of the great Lord Gwyn, chosen undead, who has rung the Bell of Awakening. I wish to elucidate your fate. Do you seek such enlightenment? Very well. Then I am pleased to share. Chosen undead, your fate is to succeed the great Lord Gwyn. So that you may link the fire, cast away the dark, and undo the curse of the undead. To this end, you must visit Anor Londo and acquire the Lord Vessel. I am pleased to see you well. Is it something urgent? Now, King Sigafrant is good for one. Well, no, not one thing, but he's good for many things. But one thing that he's really good is, is he can break up Titanite shards. The smallest is uh, the small Titanite shards. Green ones break up into just Titanite shards. Not, not in a one-to-one -one ratio as well. I'm fairly certain it's a... Chunks break up to three large shards. The large shards Farewell, into five Joseph small. Undead. I remain here and await thee. And I don't know what slabs break into because I wouldn't dream of actually breaking down a slab. Is it something? Let's just do a couple of more just for the sake of it. It's not like I don't have any green titanite. And even if I didn't, if I had, I would need more because I have like, what? Even if I break down more of them. Yeah. However, there's another thing you can do. Feed items. This is basically selling. You can actually sell items. 
And you gain a few souls apiece, and he makes that horrible gurgling noise. Broken straight swords. So. Now, here's the thing that you need to know. Do not, under any circumstances, sell items you might want to keep. Even if you think, uh, oh, that's just a crap item. I'm not going to use that. Don't sell it. You know, oh, this armor. I'm not going to wear heavy armor. <laughs> yeah, don't. Under any circumstances, in any way, do that. I'm not even kidding. The only things you should really sell are items that you can just loot off any enemy. Uh, or items that you you know for a fact you will not use. Like, I'm not gonna use a second Wanderer suit. Or Wanderer coat or Wanderer's manchete. I'm just not gonna use them because I already have a set. So, I'm gonna feed it to them. There's no, I mean, why? I feel like can wear two hats. Then we have all the other armors, and in my opinion, I'm actually not gonna sell any other stuff except for the hollow stuff that that's just crap that you just don't need in any way, shape, or form. My first playthrough, I thought I'd never, ever, 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 ever use heavier armor. So I gave him all my armor, my, my heavier armor. And then I found Farewell, out about Havel's chosen ring. undead. I remain here. And then I cried. Well, I didn't cry, but I was annoyed. Greatly annoyed. And now there's one thing you also have to remember, but do not go to fighting immediately, because the thing is, since the filing shrine is dead, you can't, you know, put up that as your shrine. Instead, what you should do is go up into the elevator and just go to the fire, the, the, the fire, the bonfire just above the blacksmith. That will also be close to where we need to go, and say this fortress is right beyond that point. And I said say this fortress without thinking it there, actually. I made it a joke, but apparently I hate that place. Yeah. Anyway, oh, 15,000 souls. That's nice. Now, I got the equipment for ascending and uh, for improving and ascending all the weapons I want. Now, the thing about Quillag's soul that I didn't actually say is that you can either ascend a katana or a scimitar, a scimitar with it. If you do the katana, you get the Chaos Blade, which is a very powerful katana. It has one of the highest bleeds. Instead of bleeding in three hits, uh, the enemy bleeds in uh, two hits, I think. Uh, but I think that you actually take damage whenever you use it, so... Well, uh, yeah. Man. You seem to be doing alright. Need anything forged? No. Instead, uh, my favorite weapon to, to get is Quelag's Fury Sword. Which is based off Scimitar rather than Katana. The difference between the two is very small. I mean, uh, well, sorry, what am I saying? Uh, yeah, I was getting ahead of myself. Basically, Quillag's Fire Sword is a... Well, it's a type of Chaos Fire Scimitar. Now, uh, if you remember what I said about Chaos and the Fire, basically, it means that it does fire damage, a lot of fire damage. And... But it scales off your humanity. When you hold 10 humanity, uh, it doesn't go higher than 10, it doesn't matter if you have 50 or 10, uh, then you gain extra damage from that. Or from 7 or 5 as well. But, Quillax Fire Sword is a bit different from any normal weapon, because any normal Chaos weapon would lose all stat scaling. But Quillax Fire Sword still has a bit of scaling. It has C... I think it has E in Strength and C in Dexterity, which means that it is actually quite a viable weapon. 
Now I'm gonna reinforce my armor. I'm just gonna keep my wondrous hood, my wondrous coat, and my wondrous footy pajamas. Uh, I don't know. Wait a minute. Reinforce. Hold on. Did I actually reinforce properly? Go get yourself killed. Night. And let's see here. Do did I actually do that properly? Because now I'm seeing here. Yeah, yeah, plus scimitar plus ten. Spear plus ten. Good. Well, I don't know. you need it. And uh, reinforce armor. Yes. This means I can reinforce my wondrous coat. That will increase by three, so yes. Oh, I can actually reinforce uh, one of my other items as well. That's pretty good. Oh, I can reinforce it even further. Nice, nice, nice. However, I'm not. Why? Well, because I need to save my Titanite chunks. Uh, the reason I need to save my Titanite chunks is because they are going to be used as soon as I get the large... Or the, the big ember, basically, that will allow the weapons to be improved up to 15. I'm going to improve my Katana to 15. So... I also want to see... Why is the... Why is it so low? No 249, I thought so. I was wondering there were... Why the heck is it marked as so low? But I guess that's because I'm wielding it in one hand and not two or something like that. Oh well. Hello everybody, Sidon here with a voiceover. <laughs> yeah, I'm not actually playing at this point. I'm sitting here in my uh, editing software and talking. That's because I forgot to plug the microphone in when I was doing this and uh, yeah. Anyway, going to go kill the Hydra. Yeah, right, I had trouble with the water missiles. Uh, I've killed all the crystal bones because I didn't want them to death. Right, uh, no, I don't. Uh, I, I can't remember. Really no, no, right, the, the tree covered there, yeah. Anyway, the Hydra isn't actually that hard to kill. The hardest bit is getting to the Hydra. Once you're in the water, and I recommend you use the Rusted Iron Ring, it will start charging at you like that. And you can then start chopping heads off. Now, it's not the Hydra of Greek mythology, uh, what's that? Nemean Hydra? Something like that. So, when you cut a head off, it doesn't grow back. You remember to also stay in the water, but don't go too far out, ow. Because if you go too far out, you see there's, you know, there's a hint of a ledge out there, if you look carefully. And, uh, yeah, if you go too far out, uh, you'll fall off and die. Uh, once you start knocking heads off, they will become easier. Uh, the fewer heads charging at you, and... Just run up and cut them. However, also as uh, they become fewer, it also become harder to actually get to a head in time. Now I'm locked on here, which you actually shouldn't be. As you see there, I uh, finally let my lock go. Now, once you're down to one head, uh, my recommendation is pull out a bow and just have at it. And remember to actually stand a bit closer if you're using heavier arrows, because they lose the damage at range. <clears throat> and it should be easy to kill, and there we go. And there's the knight starting over there, it's not worth anything, I mean, to get to this point, you, well, you should have gotten the, uh, 
Elite Knight armor. Anyway, the Dust Crown Ring is the interesting item there. What it does is it halves your HP and doubles your sorcery casting. So it's not that good. I would personally just get a few more, you know, what, two more attunement slots or something like that. So, uh, yeah, as you can see, I'm showing the ring. I uh, didn't know what I did. Anyway, now that you've killed the Hydra, there's a bit of an interesting thing over here. And, uh, still not like, yep, there they are. And as you can see, you can tilt the camera up to easier see where you can walk. But as long as you hug the wall, there's no problem. And, oh, right, right, uh, the, uh, it's not here. It's not here because, uh, yeah, yeah there's supposed to be a cr golden crystal golem here. But, as you can see, it's not here. So... If this is the case, just, you know, uh, save, quit, and reload. And here we have the Golden Crystal Golem. The Golden Crystal Golem is basically like any Crystal Golem. It's just a bit tougher, I think. Or is it even that? I assume it's a bit tougher. But uh, if you're gonna melee it, then just strafe around and... I mean, the basic part of melee, playing a melee character in this game is knowing your enemy's moveset. Knowing what attacks he uses, knowing what uh, times you can strike. Ooh, who is this? So, it is thou who rescueth me. Most gracious, I am deeply obliged. I am Dusk of Ulysseel. I come up from an age long before thine. I cannot stay here for long, so, before I disappear, allow me to ask one thing. My home, Ulysseo, is the home of ancient sorceries. My hope is to pass this profound knowledge to thee, with thine approval. Would this be of assistance to thee? If you don't say yes, you're a moron. My heartfelt thanks. I am pleased beyond words. Then I shall. Engrave my signature. If thou art in need, pray summon me from my signature. It seems that my time is done. May the great flames guide thee. As she says, you can find her summon signature on the ground a bit away. And from her, you can buy some. Mm, well, some. well, yeah, one good sorcerer at least. Uh, it's more important to actually buy the wild helmet over there. Uh, to buy the um, the uh, Ulasil Ivory Catalyst. The Ivory Catalyst is uh, the best catalyst for low intelligence sorcery casting. It uh, is basically. And why the hell am I stopping? Uh, it's always weird when you're doing this, like, you, you know, a week, a voiceover a week later, and you're looking at me like, why the hell did I do, do that? Anyway, over there is the summon signature. This is basically what you'll see whenever you can summon another player or one of the NPCs before a boss. I am Dusk of Ulysseo. It is an honor to see thee again. I shall follow thine wishes. Anyway, uh, the spell she has hidden body, cast light, uh, repair. Repair is. Uh, repair. Oh, well, yeah, I prefer just using the repair box. Hidden weapon and charm charmeleon. But uh, Ulysseo Ivory Catalyst is the important bit. Getting light as well, especially if your sorcerer character is imperative in the Tomb of the Giants. Uh, the other two other ways of getting light is to visit more size of it and get the um, uh, the uh, sunlight nugget. Tonight, pray summon me again. I only wish to be of some genuine assistance. May the flames guide thee. Or getting the skull lantern, which is really bad because it. You have to hold it in your hand, so either no weapon or no shield. Anyway, this will be it for this voiceover, and uh, 
I will see you in some other video, I think. Uh, I have... Um, I'm, the next video is going to be Sans Fortress, which I had to redo because the recording cut out in the middle of it and you just got to see the end and the start. Anyway, see you later.